Welcome to section 12 of viruses. This is our virus overview figure, and in this video we'll be discussing parvovirus B19, which you can see right here. This scene will take place at a pool party. All of these kids were invited to the party, and parfaits were handed out to all in attendance, as you can see by all the parfaits in the children's hands. Parfait sounds like parvovirus, which should help you remember that this image is all about parvovirus B19. Notice that we've included a lot of blue colors in this image, which is to help you remember that this is a DNA virus. You may have noticed that the children are all in a line to see something, and now you can see why. They're waiting to see this little hummingbird. Hummingbirds are some of the smallest birds in the world, and this is here to help you remember that parvovirus B19 is the smallest DNA virus. The fact that the kids are lined up waiting to see the bird should help you remember that it's a linear virus. In the first virus video, I mentioned that we usually won't include any information if the virus is single-stranded. However, because parvovirus is the only single-stranded DNA virus, we thought it would be helpful to include something to help you remember this. So with this in mind, we've shown this bully kid here spraying the children in line with some silly string. You can see a single strand coming out of the container, and this is to help you remember that parvovirus B19 is a single-stranded virus. All right, now notice that we've shown some skinny dippers in the pool. We've intentionally blacked out this inappropriate behavior, but you can tell that these oblivious adults seem pretty comfortable being naked in a pool. In any case, the fact that there are naked people in this image should help you remember that parvovirus B19 is a naked virus. You can also see that there is a little sectioned off area where the hot tub is, and we can see steam rising into the air from this area. This is one of our recurring symbols and should help you remember that parvovirus B19 is transmitted through respiratory droplets. To make this pool party extra fun, you can see that the host has purchased a bunch of red balloons, which will be passed out later. They have carefully been placed inside of an enclosed area because otherwise they would fly away. The enclosed area is a symbol for the bone marrow, and the red balloons are a symbol for red blood cells. So together, this should help you remember that parvovirus B19 replicates in red blood cell precursor cells within the bone marrow. Everything has been pretty uneventful so far. Of course, there have to be bullies at these parties to make it miserable for everyone. So we've shown this bully front and center with a plastic toy hand smacking this poor child in the cheek. The plastic hand has five fingers and should make you think of fifth's disease. The slapped cheek should make you think of the slapped cheek rash. So together, these ideas should help you remember that parvovirus B19 causes fifth disease or erythema infectiosum, which presents with an erythematous rash on the cheeks known as a slapped cheek rash. Also notice that this girl who's getting slapped is wearing a lacy shirt. This should help you remember that following the slapped cheek rash, a lacy reticular rash usually spreads to the trunk and extremities. This is an image of a child with fifth disease. As you can see, he has a slapped cheek appearance as well as a rash that is spread to his trunk and arms. Now we've added another bully to the image, and he's in the back popping all the balloons with a sickle. The sickle is our symbol for sickle cell disease, and the balloons inside of the container represent the progenitor red blood cells in the bone marrow. So the fact that this kid is destroying these balloons should make you think of aplastic anemia, which occurs due to failure of the bone marrow to produce blood cells. So collectively, these ideas should help you remember that parvovirus B19 can cause aplastic crises in sickle cell patients. All right, now let's turn our attention to this muscle man in the car. The car is our symbol for the heart, and the muscle guy inside of the car should make you think of the myocardium, which is the muscular tissue of the heart. So together, this should help you remember that parvovirus B19 can cause myocarditis. The host also has a dog at this party, which is a basset hound. We introduced this symbol in our herpes video, and we've included the hound here as well to help you remember that parvovirus B19 can precipitate Bichette syndrome. Unfortunately, one of the little girls lost her toy doll, and now this concerned mother is attempting to reach for it without getting wet. In order to do this, she has to get on her knees, and you can see that they've gotten a bit banged up from this incident. In any case, the swollen knees should help you remember that parvovirus B19 can cause arthralgias and arthritis in adults. To add to the pool decor, notice that we've added some torches to the image. Just like in our other videos, these are here to help you remember that parvovirus B19 is a torches infection. To drive this point home further, we've shown a pregnant woman in the hot tub, which should help you remember that pregnant women can contract the disease. Also, the baby doll that's in the pool appears swollen because of all the water that it soaked up. This is a reference to hydrops fatalis, which is a condition characterized by excess fluid accumulation in a fetus that usually results in death. So if a pregnant woman becomes infected with parvovirus B19, then the fetus is at risk of developing hydrops fatalis. So again, swollen baby doll for hydrops fatalis. All right, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A nine-year-old boy with a history of sickle cell disease is brought to the emergency department due to shortness of breath. Several days ago, he developed a fever, malaise, and myalgias. 
Physical examination reveals conjunctival pallor. Laboratory analysis is significant for a hematocrit of 27% and a reticulocyte count of 0.2%. The medical team concludes that this patient's condition is due to a pathogen that most likely replicates in which of the following cell types? A. B cell precursors B. Erythrocyte precursors C. T cell precursors or D. Macrophage precursors Okay, let's go through the key points from the question. This boy has a history of sickle cell disease. Also, several days ago, he developed a fever, malaise, and myalgias, which was likely due to a viral infection. His presentation at the emergency department has shown conjunctival pallor. So we can conclude that he has anemia. These features are highly suggestive of an aplastic crisis, which is confirmed by the laboratory results showing a decreased hematocrit and reticulocyte count. A normal response to a low hematocrit would be to increase the production of red blood cells from the bone marrow, causing the reticulocyte count to rise. However, this patient has a lower than expected response, meaning that the bone marrow is unable to adequately produce reticulocytes. Therefore, we can conclude that the virus replicates in erythrocyte precursors in the bone marrow, resulting in an abnormal erythrocyte production and a transient aplastic crisis. So the correct answer is B erythrocyte precursors. From the image, recall that the kid popping the balloons right here is here to help you remember that parvovirus B19 replicates in the erythrocyte precursors in the bone marrow. Many viruses replicate in lymphocytes such as HIV. However, parvovirus B19 does not, so A and C are incorrect. Also, bacteria such as TB replicate in macrophages, but again, parvovirus B19 does not, so D is incorrect. Remember, Parvovirus B19 replicates in erythrocyte precursors, so the correct answer is B. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know for parvovirus B19.